Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 update series. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about method variables and binding. So let's start with method variables. These are variables that have been assigned a function. Hopefully you watched the tutorial about data types in 2.3, so you're familiar with what this means. But essentially, we're taking a reference to a function and we're holding that in a variable. The variable that holds the function or the reference to the function has scope, which acts exactly as you expect. So you can have a method variable be global scope, instance scope, or local scope, and that variable will act as expected. But the next and most important thing to know about method variables, the function referenced by the variable is always bound to an instance or a struct. Now there's an asterisk here, which I'll talk about in a future tutorial, but for the moment, just take it as true that the function and a method variable is bound to an instance or a struct. We'll talk more about this in just a moment, but first, let's talk about how method variables are created. So the form of a method variable is the unnamed function that we talked about in the writing your own functions tutorial assigned to a variable. So if you remember from that tutorial, we always had one form of the function that went function, then any arguments, and then the code. And I said at the time that it wouldn't be useful when used just like that. This is one of the primary ways to use those unnamed or anonymous functions. You immediately assign them to a variable. So this is what the form looks like. An actual version of one might look like this. My function equals function, parentheses, open brackets, show debug message, hello world, close brackets. And then you use these functions exactly the same way you would script functions with the variable name and then open parentheses, close parentheses. So now that we know how to create a method variable, let's talk more about what bound means. For a function to be bound, it means that that function runs from inside the scope it is bound to, regardless of who calls it. So if a function is created inside of instance A or struct A, it can be run from anywhere, assuming you reference the variable that holds it appropriately, but it will still act on the instance or struct that it's bound to. This is the opposite of script functions declared inside of a script asset. These unbound functions will run in the scope of whatever instance or struct calls it. So how is a method bound? Methods are bound when they are created and they are bound to the instance or struct currently in scope. This means that whenever you create a method variable, you need to pay attention to the scope that is currently active. But let's jump over to GameMaker Studio to see a couple examples. Okay, so let's start with just two objects. We'll have object A and object B. Here we have the create code for object A. Here we have the create code for object B. In object A, we're gonna create a variable called my variable. We're gonna initialize it to zero. We're gonna do the same thing in object B. Then we're going to create a method variable in object A. So here you can see we have the creation of an unnamed function, and we're gonna assign that function to the variable my function. Now, what is in scope right now is object A or more specifically an instance of object A when this is actually running. If we come over here, we can see that what we are then going to do is take this variable right here and we're gonna save it to my func in object B. And just as a side note, I'm using an object ID and the accessor to do so. You wouldn't normally want to do this, but because this is a simple test project, I can get away with it here. And then we're gonna call my function and we're gonna pass in the value 50. So the question is, which my variable, right? Because we have a my variable in A and a my variable in B, which one will be increased to 50? I'll put a breakpoint here and we'll run it in the debugger and we'll see. Okay, so here we are in the debugger. You can see that we have object A already created. I set the instant creation order in order to be sure that A was created before B. And now we're gonna step through B's create event. So this instance of object B creates its own my variable and initializes it to zero. Then we get the my function from A and assign it to the my function in B. And now already you can see a very interesting thing. The reference to the function that the my function variable holds, you can see right over here, 2CFA100. This variable in object B holds the exact same value. In other words, it's referring to the same function. And now if we run this function, you can see that even though we have run this function from inside of object B or an instance of object B, we have increased the variable held by object A, or again, an instance of object A. And that is because even though we're running it from inside of B, the function is bound to A, and so it's going to act on object A. 
regardless of where it is run from. Let's stop the debugger and see another example of this. Okay, so here we are again, and I've uncommented this code. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create object C. Object C is also gonna have a variable called my variable, and we're gonna create two different functions. First, we're gonna create this function, which will do the same thing as this function up here, and we're gonna save it to a variable inside of object C called function A. And we're gonna use the dot accessor to do this and save the value of this function to this variable. We're then gonna go use the with statement on the same instance ID, and we're going to create another function that does exactly the same as these first two functions, and we're going to save that to the variable function B. Again, hopefully you're familiar with how to access variables inside of other instances, and if not, there should be a link to those tutorials up top. So now, object C should hold function A and function B, both of which will do the same thing. One of them declared inside of the with statement, and one of them declared with the dot accessor. If we come over here to object C, we can see that it just has the my variable, which will initialize to zero. And then if we push the shift key, we're gonna run function A and function B and pass in the value 15. So we'll be adding 15 to the variable my variable. So now the question is, what will happen? Will the my variable and object A be increased twice to 30? Will the variable my variable and object C be increased twice to 30? Or will both variables be increased by 15? And in any case, why will that happen? But let's run this and find out. So here we are, and the project is actually running right now because I want to be able to push shift. But we have a real-time debugging on. But you can see that we have an instance of object A with its my variable set to 50, and an instance of object C with its my variable set to zero. And this instance also has both functions, functions A and functions B. As you can see already, they are two different functions. So if we come back here to our code, we can see that each of these creates its own function. Even though they're doing the same thing, they are different functions. So now I'm gonna push shift and we'll see what happens. There you go. You can see we increase from 50 to 65 and from zero to 15. If I do it one more time, we see that repeated and repeat it again. So what's actually happening here? Well, remember that with method variables, they are bound inside of the scope that is running when they are created. If we use the dot accessor, even though we are accessing a variable held by another instance, we are still inside the scope of this instance. However, with changes the scope to that other instance or to the instance that is being accessed with with. So in this case, this function is running inside the scope of object A, and thus gets bound to this instance. And when we use with, we switch the scope over to object C, and therefore it is bound to an instance of object C. Hopefully that's not going over this point in too great of detail, but really how methods are bound to instances or structs is very important. And keeping in mind the way that they are bound and how to control that is also very important. There's a world of difference between these two forms, and you could easily get game crashing errors if you don't pay attention to the scope that is running when you create your functions. So now let's say you want to change which instance a function is bound to. Can you do that? Well, the short answer is yes and no, depending upon what you mean. GameMaker has a built-in or runtime function called method, and you can use this built-in function to take any existing function and bind it to any struct or instance. However, it's important to note that it doesn't actually rebind the function that you give it. Instead, it creates a new method variable. So it takes the form method variable equals method and then either a struct or an instance ID and then the function that you want to rebind. So an example, my function equals method, id, and then some other function. Let's jump back over to GameMaker. Okay, so I've commented out the code that creates object C. We're back to just A and B. We have the exact same setup as before, but now I'm gonna go over a couple more things. So whenever I push space, both object A and object B are gonna call my function and add 20 to the variable my variable. But object B will also have something happen when you push enter. What we will do then is we will use the method function and we will bind this method to the my function variable in object B. This essentially creates a new function that does exactly what the my function function does, but it will make sure that it is bound to object B. But let's just run this in the debugger. Okay, so here we go. Again, I'm running this with real-time debugging on. We have an instance of A and an instance of B, both with their variables. And right now, if we start by pushing spacebar, 
we can see the variable inside of instance A gets increased by 20 twice. And that's because currently the my function variable inside of A and B is the same function, and that function is bound to A. So every time we hit spacebar, the variable in A gets increased by 40. However, if we hit enter, now you can see that the function held by my function is a different function, and we've bound it to this instance of object B. So if we push spacebar now, you can see that both variables are increasing by 20. So there you go, we have rebound, or really created a copy of the my function held in instance A, and bound that new function to instance B. So in summary, method variables are variables which hold a function. Those variables have scope, and that scope acts as normal. But the method that is referenced by that variable is bound to either an instance or a struct. We're only using instances for the moment, but in the struct tutorials, we'll talk more about how this works when it is used with a struct. Methods are bound when created to the instance or struct currently in scope, and the method function, the built-in method function, creates a new method variable bound to whatever you told it to be bound to when you call that function. As always, the links in this slide will be below, along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.